Hello, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalist of East Tennessee. I am Ben Snyder. And I'm John Clark. And we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you are not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find free-thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and people curious about living a life free of supernatural beliefs. This is a call-in show. However, we only have one phone line. So if you can't get through, we invite you to uh, tweet your questions to us at FFTVNOX. The Rationalist of East Tennessee's monthly activities on the f occur on the first and third Sunday mornings are usually lectures with lively roundtable discussion. The second Monday, or Sunday, correction, is a book club. The fourth Sunday is a reflections gathering, which is a potluck afternoon gathering at a member's home. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun meetup at a local bar or eatery. Uh, tonight's meetup at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria uh, will be after the show. Uh, you can head down there uh, and we will be there with the uh, silver jacketed copy of The God Delusion sitting on the table for the people to find us. Today is September 25th, 2012, and we'll be talking about the prayer at UT Games. Mm. Uh, first in the news, um, as you know, uh, we've had some violent protests in Egypt and Libya due to some media uh, output. Um, was it the same people who, or some of the same people who had burned the Koran, I believe? But, uh, it's, it's disputed who made the video, yeah, really. Right. I haven't actually seen it, right, but um, this will kind of come back to our topic with the UT prayer, but when a religious group like some Muslims, not all, but some that have an extreme reaction to the criticism of their religion, um, and they protest against, for example, America, which is kind of how this is seen, because uh, the video did or originate, or originate in America. But, uh, you know, when do you call a stop to the free speech? When, mm -hmm. I guess that's the big issue regarding this. Uh, well, there's a few issues. You've got that. You've also got... Um, foreign diplomacy, you've got, um, well, the one uh, U.S. consulate who was killed. Mm -hmm. um, but when do you put a stop on free speech? Do you put a stop on free speech? Or limitations. Or, or any limitations. Uh, Obama had this to say uh, on NPR today. They also mentioned it, but he, he had spoken to the United Nations stating that um, media has gotten to the point, and just personal media has gotten to the point where when you say something, and you hit the button and send it, there's no control over that. We, we to a degree, due to the Patriot Act, Act and some technological advances, can monitor, but control is, is definitely out of the question, and uh, his words were that it's obsolete. Um, when speaking with, with other diplomats, I know that some of the criticism towards America is, and this is from the professional, the diplomats of other countries, why can't you just you know, curb this? Why you tell your citizens, hey, cut it out? And this is America's history. Is uh, the we don't we don't have a small group go stop. This is this is something. It's not appropriate, and we just stop it. Free speech tends to in this country trump in the other direction. As the you know the court, the street preacher, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church is a great example of this. Um, we we allow them the voice. Uh, and the restrictions are rather few. Mm -hmm. So, next thing in the news I got is the Military Association of uh, Atheists and Freethinkers has brought up, well, this was about a month ago, but brought up that uh, West Point Secular Student Alliance is getting a lot more attention, a lot more um, inclusive, and in allowing people to come in and represent uh, secular individuals. Mm -hmm. For uh, camps or just services like clearing out wildfire from local or a brush from where local wildfires have spread to protect. Mm. Um, but on on the other side of that coin, the 2012 chaplaincy has, um, and this is for pretty much the entire military, is is not commenting. They're not active. We got a lot of attention. I say we. I'm a former veteran. We got some veterans here. Or not former veteran, but a veteran. Um, and got a lot of tension, tension uh, this past year with uh, Rock Beyond Belief at Fort Bragg. Mm. Um, so we're glad to have the 
attention in the school in West Point, but now it's just gone. Uh, the uh, the, rep the secular representative has been removed from their um, chaplaincy council. Mm -hmm. I don't know a great deal about that, but it's just communication has ceased between the chaplaincy and the secular public, basically. So, granted, we did have this occur, um, like West Point, we have that occurring this year, and in the beginning of the year we had uh, the Rock Beyond Belief at Fort Bragg, mm -hmm. but it looks like that's going to cease and we're going to have some trouble in the future is basically what that gets down to. Mm -hmm. um, always terrible to hear is an, another case of <laughs> freedom of speech issues, but within the Mormon church. We have a Mormon writer, writer who's criticized Mitt Romney. Did you have some more about that? or? Uh, just mostly that this guy apparently had a blog and he complained about Mitt Romney and uh, expressed that he disagreed with Mitt Romney. Um, and the Mormon church as a result has, uh, sought, has been seeking to excommunicate him well, simply over uh, not endorsing Mitt Romney, who is a Mormon. I can't think of who it was, but uh, Stephen Colbert had someone on his show um, mm -hmm. who was just about as at odds with Mitt Romney, I guess, that you could be and simultaneously be a Mormon and be a politician. But I can't remember who it was. But he Are you referring to sense. Tom Huntsman? I believe so. Tom Huntsman was running for the, was was probably the least known candidate who was running right, for right, the okay. Republican candidacy well, for president. He had very, he was very critical of Mitt Romney. I, I, it's lost to me now, but <laughs> when it, he, he did give an official endorsement, I mean, hearing, Things like this, we can't we can't imply that there's a, uh, a strong arm operating in the background, but it certainly freaks me out that uh, you know somebody blogs uh, on. I mean, if I were to blog about our movement, I, mean, I certainly did this past couple, not this weekend, but the weekend before regarding the UT prayer, and no one contacted me from our group and suggested that I should stop. Suggest, you know, it's certainly not any type of excommunication well, or cited apostasy. I mean, that, that doesn't exist here. Well, it does. It does. <laughs> oh, well, well, would you talk about that? Yeah. Well, uh, it's kind of a subject probably for another time. Oh, okay. but there, it's uh, like there's a website called Free Thought Blogs where you can get in trouble there, depending on who's moderating. Okay, yes. And there's also a new uh, type of atheist movement thing called Atheism Plus that's very, in some ways, quite cultish you know, in some areas. I would like to, to mention, not directly towards the movement, mm -hmm. but uh, being part of this movement for, well, intimately part of the movement for the past two years, mm -hmm. and knowing about it and seeing it on the horizon for the years before that, I, I'd heard when someone would say, actually, I just made the same mistake right before you, you told me about, you reminded me about the uh, A-plus movement. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't do that. And you can see it looming on the horizon that at any time a group gets together, there are people who want to monitor, want to, well, yeah. you know, so such and such limit what some people will say regarding who mm -hmm. they stand for, or in this case, I guess it's a specific blog. And uh, I would I would utter the phrase that we don't do that, always knowing that it could happen. And then when, when I'd heard about this, and I have not looked a lot into it, mm -hmm. I do remember making my own blog that... Um, not on actual blog spot or anything, but mm -hmm. that I can't make the claim anymore that we don't, as a movement, at least have small groups with uh, something that resembles a dogma. Well, yeah, uh, but I, you know, you know, that's expected to happen. Humans gather yeah. together on things they agree on. Uh, how dogmatic they are is, it, you know, it just depends on the people. Right. I think I think it comes to if you're emotionally involved, you can really you can fall for some tricks. Obviously. Um, I see this happen with a lot of vegans, actually. I'm not dissing you guys, but, man, I, I get that response from some, hmm. saying, if you're not vegan, how can you be part of the secular movement? How can you be part of reason? And uh, I'm not going to go into the arguments, but it, it's similar. And so hmm. here we have a case, you know, sadly, in the Mormon world. We've got a case, sadly, in the Islamic world that's extremely, hmm. probably much more serious, uh, this type of reaction, extreme reaction. Um, <coughs> frightening and happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we have about the Texas cheerleaders? Oh, 
This is a high getting, school? Getting closer to our subject now, uh, down in Texas, there is a, uh, it, it, I do believe it is a high, uh, no, I'm sorry, it is a middle school, not middle a high school, school, where cheerleaders have been holding uh, signs uh, that have Bible verses on them, uh, cheering on their team. Uh, while holding these and uh, there were complaints made about this uh, that it sh that this should not be allowed that this is you know this violation of separation of, of church and state in this case of school's football team uh, and the uh, what what happened was the school board had said okay yeah this isn't oh, this won't work so we needed to you know, it, this this is a problem. So they told them they can do this, but a judge lifted it, uh, g gave them some a temporary uh, allowance to do so, until you know if it, it's further pursued, uh, to continue this practice. So they are back to continuing doing it. Right. Uh, and this gets closer to the UT prayer uh, situation because this is like this is similarly a school, uh, a, f a sporting event, same sport in fact where you have people holding signs, you know, the cheerleaders uh, supporting verses. And it's interesting too, and I think this is important to note, especially when we start talking about prayer at the UT games, uh, is that there's nothing wrong. Uh, no, one, no one has complained and no one's been fighting, had to fight for it's, uh, the right of the crowd to be holding signs with verses. The crowd can hold those all they like and, you know, from where they are. The problem lies with the administration, those people putting on, you could say, the, the show, the game, the sport, uh, invoking and supporting as particular religion. Right, I guess, and you gotta remember, these are middle school kids. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more impulsive. Well, You kinda, and, and you haven't really gotten to that point where intimately questioning everything you do is, is a part of your day or, or what and you, no one's saying that the cheerleaders can't be religious the cheerleaders can't have well, no. religious values it's it's, it's it's like you said they can't pray um, it's more of an issue about what what is being done on behalf it's like right. if you're a teacher you can be religious you can pray on your own time you cannot do that with right. your class and I, I, I like to point back because you, you know you have class uh, of prayer. Uh, Rhode Island in the case of uh, help me Jessica Alquist, ah. um, you know, she's a high school student. You have here uh, next to us, we got Lenore City, mm -hmm. another high school student um, who, okay, in high school, you're really starting to, to learn. You know, mm -hmm. you've, you've got a good body of, of all the subjects, you know, hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, you know, on your own, these students, both these students contacted and, and went about representing them, themselves and assisting one with the, uh, actually both of them with the ACLU. Mm -hmm. and. What about middle school? I mean, how many students are able, do you think, to do that on their own? Um, and so I think the faculty, the staff, I mean, anybody with, with uh, authority has, you have the same responsibility, but you really do have more, in a sense, to, to protect those rights of the students. What about elementary schools? Um, how would you even know that it's going on? What kid mm -hmm. is going to, you know, what eight-year-old, what six-year-old is going to communicate to you that, it would be harder to there's just a, There's a First Amendment violation. It's extremely difficult. In fact, mm -hmm. we already know that racism is hard enough to communicate uh, at that point. And so this, this tends to be easily discussed at the college level, the high school mm -hmm. level. But I just, thinking about that, it's a little frightening what, what could happen. But you, I think these faculty, because you got a middle school here, yeah. and this judge who, who just kind of basically put a restraining order on the uh, decision the school system, right. right? On the school board. Right, so that they could prevent it. And this is a delay. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know if it's appropriate or not uh, thinking about it, but it's a well, delay response. To well, let's go ahead and get on the main topic. Okay. Right. Um, right before I do, though, I do want to mention the Texas Free Thought Convention mm -hmm. is coming up. And uh, I went last year. It was excellent. Um, that was one of Christopher Hitchens, or in fact, I think it was his last public performance. Um, this year it's going to be October the 19th through the 21st and just check that out on your own and if it's something that might interest you or if you're viewing from that area uh, I highly recommend it. Looking here we've got uh, Dawkins, we've got uh, actually uh, Jessica Alquist will be there, um, Matt Dillahoney, PZ Myers and Sean Faircloth. So um, 
I under, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cornwell. Actually, most of them are doctors, but. All right. Yeah, on to our main topic, which is mm -hmm. going to be this UT prayer that occurred. Um, this is UT Knoxville, or, or the issue of prayer at UT Knoxville's, uh, the volunteers' the sports games. games. Right. Uh, it's September 13th. And we, um, we want to be okay. sure to tell, callers, uh, tell our viewers that we would like for any of you to, who have questions or would like to challenge us on this or present even just other ideas on, the, on any of these topics, but especially, especially the main topic, uh, please give us a call at the number on the screen, 865-215-2288, uh, and we'd be, we'd love to have a uh, conversation with you. Right, yeah, um, yeah, yes. yeah, you're right, and uh, don't worry, just go ahead and interrupt me if I forget about the callers, because we got to get you guys in on this. Um, we would like to. strikes a nerve, if we miss something, you know, you guys got to keep us on our toes here. <laughs> um, some of this we make up as we go along. But not all of it. Uh, but the Freedom for Religion Foundation um, mm -hmm. contacted, uh, the vice president contacted Chancellor Jimmy Creek over at UT. Um, and the issue is that during these prayers, um, the announcer often will, will call for attendees to rise. So there's, there's this, it's inclusive what he's asking. Mm -hmm. But if you're not part of the group, if you're not a Christian, um, it's exclusive, you know. I mean, you can stand if you want to is one of the criticisms, but why would I stand for and and, and be part of that if it's not what represents me? But uh, so, and they frequently invoke Jesus Christ, and this is where we get into the legal problem. Mm -hmm. um, a precedent in, in uh, Tennessee as established by uh, Shadouri versus the state of Tennessee in 1997 uh, says that this non-sectarian prayer is not a violation of the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. If and you do not invoke any particular deity or make correct use certain terminology that would suggest a particular Basically, uh, in God we trust on the money. Which God? Are we talking about an omnipotent being? And you can kind of, you can play around with these words. Mm -hmm. um, but if the announcer invokes Jesus Christ, then that's certainly a violation of the precedent established in 97. Right. Um, of course, we would hear we hear often make the argument that that's a violation of the First Amendment, anyhow. Mm -hmm. And a freedom from religion. That's how they worded their paper. But they did mention the uh, Shadhuri versus State of Tennessee mm -hmm. um, case to support. They still broke even the recent president established by mentioning Jesus Christ mm -hmm. or or concluding the prayer in very interesting ways, like the God we all know and love, the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And amen, which, right? Which really narrows it down. Well, I mean, Heavenly Father, I'd say, especially out of that, because that's typically uh, Christian terminology. Uh, sometimes, I guess, perhaps Jewish. I don't think Islam too much, but it does. It is more exclusive, exclusive uh, terminology. So, a week prior to to the letter that Freedom from Religion Foundation sent to University of Tennessee Knoxville, they sent a similar letter to the mm -hmm. University of Tennessee Chattanooga. Right. And in that case, the um, the powers that be down at University uh, Chattanooga, Chancellor mm -hmm. Roger Brown, mm -hmm. had stated that a moment of silence would be more inclusive mm -hmm. and yes. that uh, all in attendance during a moment of silence can reflect on their own religious beliefs and it's, it's more inclusive and excludes almost no one. We have a call. We're going to go ahead mm -hmm. and bring them on the air. All right. Hello, caller. Hello? Yes, sir. Hi. Could we get a name or nickname? James. James. Hello. Hey, James. How's it going today, boys? Going, going all right. Well. How about you? I'm doing just fine. I just want to know what y'all's opinions are mm -hmm. on the uh, controversy at the University of Tennessee football game prayer before the game. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I guess I'll start. Um, are you asking for a personal opinion, or, or I mean, do you want to know your uh, secular he, community? He wants to know what you think. Okay. Um, well, me personally, I uh, I'm I'm certainly not included in that prayer, and I don't know why I should have to listen to it. Uh, I think a great compromise would be a moment of silence where, you know, Christians can pray, Hindus can pray, um, I can just sit there quietly or maybe speak softly with someone nearby and, and reflect on the game. I'm for that. I, I see it as a violation of the First Amendment, though, and I would, I would rather it not occur. I, uh, I, 
I, in response to that, I oh. say, well, you don't have to go to the game oh. because you don't have to turn on this television channel. Okay, well, well, let me let me put it to you this Some way. Some people wouldn't want to see the atheism stuff, but we don't got to watch this TV channel either. Uh -huh. Okay, well, the thing is, uh, the thing the thing is that the UT Games, uh, for one thing, are a college-sponsored event. A state college. college right, yeah. a state college-sponsored event. It's not a private school. College like say Johnson University, formerly known as Johnson Bible College, where they can do whatever they want to at their sports. When you're a state-funded institution, you're not supposed to uh, do anything official as officials of the games, as representatives of the state uh, that is sectarian, meaning that it promotes this particular group over everyone else. One of those things is to say a prayer, uh, which invokes a particular. Uh, Religion. Now, you, I didn't get a chance to answer your former question you asked and he responded to. Uh, I am opposed to, uh, the, to the current uh, forms of prayer they are offering uh, uh, because it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, for example, I, the place I work at, which I will not name to not, you know, to not attach them to, in any way because I don't, I don't know that they appreciate it, uh, they sometimes play music over the intercom system, and sometimes they play Christian music. And I'm stuck standing in a certain place doing my job, and I cannot personally stand Christian music. I can respect other people who do enjoy it, and that's fine. They can go and enjoy that in their car, at their home. But I'm stuck standing there, and, I'm, and they're playing this song that just gets on my nerves. It bothers me so much. Uh, because it's promoting a certain kind of belief system that I think is wrong and incorrect, uh, and you know I I'm not I I'm an atheist. There are, there are atheist songs, but I wouldn't want them to play atheist songs in an, in a public area like that where people are forced to hear them. I'd rather it be you know s songs about love, relationships, hard economic trouble, you know anything like that. I I'm, that's something we can all right. appreciate. On some level, uh, so when it comes to going to these games, you know, everyone, you know, football is something that isn't owned by a particular religion. A lot of people really enjoy football, including atheists, including Hindus and Jews and Muslims, and they would like to be able to go there and feel like they're not being excluded or that a particular group isn't being promoted or like this isn't some religious thing. You know, they have their children. Yeah, they want a football game. Yeah, they want to bring their children to this and have their children enjoy this and have fun and not worry whether or not their children are being persuaded or whatever by a particular belief system. How's that, James? Does that make sense? James, are you with us, James? Yeah, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, just really quickly, um, yeah. I, I guess just to ask you, I think what we're summing up, just to ask you a question, is if if we just don't go to the games. That really excludes us from the games. And it's a state-sponsored event. I mean, shouldn't we allow everyone to enjoy the game? I just think it's, it's God's sport, and God bless America and go ball. Okay, you think... Oh, we lost him. Well, okay, does, I, don't th I think it's... Odd. Nowhere in the Bible or any other holy text am I aware that football is ever named as a god sport. Uh, I think that's actually unfair to other sports too. Uh, may maybe God enjoys baseball. How do you know? I mean, I've never heard anyone claim it's God's sport. I mean, I'm sorry. That is kind of silly to me. I don't. You know. That one makes you, it makes it hard to think after hearing that. Well, uh, but thank you, James, for calling thank, in and asking yeah, us questions calling. and sharing your thoughts. But I'm going to grant that, I'm going to grant his, the way that he delivered that. I want you at home to think about the way that he delivered that. It's God's sport. Don't go. And what religion are you at home? You just had somebody say, it's God's sport. And, and he was basically, he, I don't think he said, did he say anything Judeo-Christian? Judeo um, but I mean, I think that's probably what he was saying. I don't, but which God? Yeah, which God? Did he even represent all Christians when he made well, that statement? Okay, we have a call. And we're going to go ahead and take this next call. Okay. Hello? <laughs> Caller? Hello, this is Faithless Forest. I'm calling in on my oh. cell phone. I hope the connection is better than last time. How am I sounding? You sound all right. You sound pretty good. Oh, keep up. Hello. Oh, and I can't think that the last call needs to understand. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, like 
for the door. Well, actually, now, Faithless, you are breaking up all of a sudden. Uh, Whatever you're doing, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I will try to speak slowly. Perhaps that will help. You know, you're getting very, yeah, very it's faint. Yeah, pretty now. bad, actually. Um, why don't you go ahead and say it, and we'll repeat it. All right. I would like to help the previous caller understand our point of view, and that would be this. We would like to ask him to stand in reverent silence while we lead the whole group in the stadium with the statement that there is no God mm -hmm. and that such belief is, mm -hmm. you know, superstitious right. nonsense. And then ask how he would feel to be part of such a system. That's an excellent and point. Him that right. If he doesn't, you know, want to experience that, that he can just not go to the game. Or turn on his TV. That's right. The system that he's proposed. From our right, it's a very exclusive, exclusive uh, 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 frame of mind, and it's very distressing. And so, it's a, you know, present a situation where mm -hmm. understand what we feel by showing here. Well, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm hard to hear, let me say goodbye, and I'll go back to watching the show on the local television. Okay. Okay. Bye, all. all. Thank you. See ya. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, yeah, it's exclusive. I like to touch on something Faithless just mentioned, which was a group of non-believers in UT saying in unison some sort of there is no God speech or whatever. Sure. You couldn't, I don't think you could motivate any group of non-believers to do that. That None of them would There's, be interested at all. I think there are some who would be very it, much willing to stand up there you know and what? say, there, we, be, we don't believe it. You know, There are some people who are... You could say proud enough to say, you know, because well, we've, they've been un tread under. I, there are people who would do that. There are people. I'm not. But a group I think it's silly. Would be very difficult. No, and it, it would not. It sounds. It's it's <laughs> it got wouldn't. a remarkable. I've seen too many groups. A remarkable similarity <laughs> to the people who founded this country, as they ran, fleeing for their lives, and in it, to make a better livelihood here in, in the state. Well, there was no states, but, but yeah, in the colonies. But the point. The point of separating. They, they don't care. But the, the point of separating uh, religions and such from something as. What should be secular, in other words, devoid of religious claims, uh, as secular as football, is that we don't exclude groups of people. You know, if if you're going to say, well, if you don't like hearing us pray to the Christian God, then don't come, then you're excluding the Jews, the atheists, the Muslims, etc. But then what happens when it gets down to, well, which form of Christian God are we praying to? And you start, you know, cutting away all the other types of Christianity. Such, you know, maybe is this going to be for Catholics? Is this only Protestants? Is this for Baptists, Methodists, you know, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses? Who are we not going to let come see our football games? Right. And they're not even your football games because you've paid to just come see this. And plus, you know, this is a this is a state-sponsored university putting on these games. Uh, it is it is illegal it's to be doing money. this. Tax money that's going to these things. Some a lot of it's probably funded by private funders as well, but it's yeah. private funders who are funding a state institution. Right. Um, UT student body is far more diverse than Knoxville's population. Mm -hmm. You got students from around the globe, a hundred countries. You know, it's, it's frequently listed, 95 plus countries. Mm -hmm. uh, people come here, all 50 states. Um, they're the ones paying to go to school there. And some of you are like, ah, but student loans, ah, but the scholarships. Well, who's paying that? I mean, these these people are paying that money to get an education. They're not. It's not a church. That's that's kind of the simplest way to look at it. Is it's not a church, and that and our founding fathers knew that. Right. We and so we established a precedent to protect religion, to mm -hmm. protect prayer, right. to protect non-prayer. I mean, it's it's yeah. the same reason that you know, teachers in public schools are not allowed to preach their personal religious beliefs because they have a captive audience. In the case of students, they by law have to get an education and be there. Right. In the case of uh, the football game, people have paid good money to come see this game and to enjoy it uh, and to share fr time with friends and family to have a great time together and enjoy the game. All right. Uh, well, and it's a matter of having a cop, uh, captive audience. We may have a call. Though. Yeah, we may have a call. So we may want to wait on the mid-program. All right. Well, uh, back to the prayer at UT, though, um, I think where we left off was that mm -hmm. we had the history of University of Tennessee Chattanooga, mm -hmm. and their uh, chancellor 
had suggested a moment of silence, mm -hmm. um, an all-inclusive event, pretty much, right. unless you are opposed to moment of silences. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it's just time to sit there and reflect on yourselves. No one is endorsing or favoring a religion uh, mm -hmm. that's part of the state. Tax yeah. money's not going to anything yeah. regarding that. And everyone gets to pray. No one, no one can stop you from praying. It's, it's important to point um, out that, you know, when you have a moment of silence at a football game like this, every person can pray to themselves uh, quietly or aloud. They can, you know, not pray or whatever. All right, we have a call. Hello, caller. Uh, this is John. You're on the show live. Could we have a nickname for you? Or a name? I, yes, it's Michelle. Hi, Hello, Michelle. Michelle. Hi, I had a response to James. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. First of all, yes, um, the football games are a state-sponsored event. Not only that, but they are supposed to be all-inclusive, just like the education at UT is. Mm -hmm. um, when he called in, he related it to the television show that you're doing right now, mm -hmm. and that is not a state-sponsored event. Not only that, it is for one particular group. Mm -hmm. Now, when he closed his call, he said that football was... Uh, was God's sport. Mm -hmm. uh, if he is so adamant about his religion and about that being God's sport, mm -hmm. I would like to point out to him that Christians preach tolerance and understanding mm -hmm. that Jesus, uh, more often than not, went after the dregs of society and the outcasts and included them mm -hmm. and if he's adamant about his religion then he should also preach tolerance and understanding yes it's also important to note that the the first as far as i'm aware the first uh known instance of separation the idea of separation of church and state was from christians in the roman empire prior to christianity becoming the major religion because in that time period, uh, religion was tied to everything you did in your life, including buying food at the marketplace. Because you know, the, a lot of cases that food was sacrificial meat, and Christians weren't allowed to eat that according to their particular beliefs. And so, it was actually early church thinkers that came up with the idea that religion and the state should be separate, and that everyone should be respected. Yes, I. I agree with that completely. Religion or lack thereof is a personal experience mm -hmm. and, and you know, if people want to get together in like-minded groups, that's wonderful, but yeah. nobody should push. Uh, I don't like when people completely push their beliefs on somebody else yeah. without taking into consideration uh, without taking into consideration how they're doing it. I, I really don't think that him, that James saying that football is a god sport was uh, very Christian. <laughs> I it's, think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say I, I agree I, with I, I, about I everything think, you said. I mean, I, I think it's a yeah. It, it, I think it's mostly a silly s statement, in my opinion. I'm sure he may take it what very about seriously. Baseball? What about chess? <laughs> right. You know, so, those aren't gods. gods. Sport. Oh yeah, they're well, all gods sports. You know, I mean, well, you know what? He te didn't say technically, chess actually, I believe, was invented by Muslims. Oh. So. Mm. So that maybe. Well, the plan right now is. If yeah. football is God's sport, then I think the atheists need to take ballet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're it's just very not, beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. I don't think we're gonna pick it. <laughs> uh, we may pick something pick, more. We're not gonna pick anything. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't well, do a lot. Thanks for the of suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good taste. Well, well, anyway, thank you guys so much. All, All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah. All um, right, uh, we need to do the mid-program break. But. Let's do the mid-program. All right. Uh, in case you are just tuning in, this is Free Thought Forum, a program uh, by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them uh, by, uh, and by individual contributions. Uh, our shows are live uh, most every Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Community Access Television. You can also see us uh, streaming online outside the Knoxville area. Just go to ctvnox.org. 
Uh, this is a call-in show. As you've heard, we are live today, September 25th, 2012. Mm -hmm. Viewers can call in now to the number on the screen or tweet them to us at FFTVNOX. Wait, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You F got it. FFTVNOX. And uh, yeah. on to the program. Well, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or Ask, meets two times a week. We have uh, evening meetups for fun, food, and uh, drink, and conversation. Ask's purpose is to supply a venue for community, camaraderie, and outreach to atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, and other like-minded persons in the East Tennessee area. Uh, we have uh, informational video we'd like to run for you now. Do you find stories of talking snakes laughable? Do you prefer the scientific method over supernatural beliefs? Are you concerned about religious leaders and organizations imposing their values and rules on your body, your family, and the rest of our society? Well, take comfort in the fact that you're not alone. The Rationalists of East Tennessee meets weekly for fellowship and provides a forum for people who support skeptical thinking and rational discussion of these and other issues. To find out more information or to find out about our next meeting, visit us on the web at www.rationalist.org. Work. Okay. All right. We're Hello. back. The uh, Rationalist of East Tennessee has Sunday activities involving lively presentations and discussions of subjects topical and timeless. Once a month, we get together for a book club. You do not need to have read the book to attend, but of course it helps. Mm -hmm. Both the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee help uh, provide a social outlet where you'll find that if you don't believe in God, you're not alone. All right. So I think we may have a call. Um, I'm not sure because I think it was, they well, called in while we, while the video was running. Until he peeks in, we can try to continue on. I oh, guess so. go for it. Yeah, I'm just kidding. yeah. So uh, following the events at University of Chattanooga, the uh, populace quickly picked up. We had an alum contact the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Freedom from Religion Foundation sent that letter in on September the 13th, and the school uh, postponed shortly before delivering a response, which is that, um, uh, well, specifically from Jimmy Creek, Chancellor over at UTK, uh, he said, I appreciate your concern about this issue, and I want to assure you that I've given this issue careful consideration. At this time, however, the university will continue to allow prayers before the university <laughs> events consistent with the Chaudhry case. Uh, just to remind you, the Chaudhry case said that non-sectarian prayer was okay. This is a state precedent, and, uh, oh, are we bringing the call in now? All right, I think we've got our caller. Here we go. Hello, caller? Hello, caller? Yes, this is Paul. Oh, hi, hi Paul. Paul. Hey, I've, I've called in before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, haven't been, I haven't even met you, so mm -hmm. I don't remember me. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I just had a quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. You're saying that we, that in a sense, religion shouldn't impose itself on the app. Is that right? Uh, that it shouldn't impose itself on us in certain uh, in, in certain contexts, such as the football game. Well, a state, and it's a this is a church-state issue mm -hmm. that we're talking about. So, proselytizing, and it, on its own, is fine. Uh, that's what we're about in America, not just about religion, but ideas in general. This is a state event, and religious proselytization and sponsorship is forbidden by the First Amendment. But uh, does that answer your, your first question? I think so. What you're saying, I understand you. I hear a little bad echo. Oh, I hear myself. Later. It is a little, it's a little troubling to hear you, but I can, I can make you out. Okay. Um, go ahead and, and let's, let's get to the, I mean, narrow it down. What, what you're going to say. Well, I was wondering if uh, by you telling somebody they can't pray at an event, then person, they're your more to that person. It's, okay, I couldn't, I couldn't fully hear you. I'm sorry, someone said something. Could you say the last part again? I heard the first part. By telling someone they can't pray at a specific event, mm -hmm. or maybe either a group or a person mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. are you not then imposing? You're saying that that's wrong. Okay. Here, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question real quick, Paul. I I get what you're saying, but I need to know where you got the idea that someone said people can't pray. Well, you're saying you can't, you shouldn't pray at a event. Like no. 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 Or, no. Or okay. The, what, I I don't know if when you tuned in, but earlier I I think I made it clear that uh, we're not saying people in the audience cannot pray. 
Uh, in fact, we've we've said that uh, re we think a great idea would be to simply have a moment of silence where uh, there's people can take time to pray right. to themselves in a group aloud. Doesn't even bother me. What we're taking issue with is that the people who run the games have a prayer, and there are certain rules you have to abide by when you do this sort of thing, where it has to be non-sectarian, where you have a prayer, but it doesn't specify the god of any particular religion or you have a moment of silence where everyone can do their own thing. And us obviously favoring the moment of silence more so. Right. Um, um, and, right. And instead of what they're currently doing where they're invoking Jesus and such Correct. specifically. Yeah. So do you understand, this is, this is really important to us, we, this is one of the things that we care the most about is uh, when someone says that we're taking away the right to pray or we're telling people not to pray, we've never said that, we never will. We don't want any part of that. We want everyone to have the right to pray or not to pray. So, do you have any anything, any further thoughts or questions on what we said so far? So I just make it, I, 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 that's a little bit more clarification, but I mean, um, I, I don't still see why even in a public setting or even a governmental setting, mm -hmm. if someone's personal belief system is Judaic or Jewish or even Islam, if they want to do both that, that prayer is wrong with them. Okay, well, a public setting, Again, that's that's pretty much along the same lines. If it's public and not not intertwined with the state yeah. government, that is, then then what's the problem? I mean, as long as you're not yelling it so loud that you can't have a conversation anywhere else, there's just no no big deal. This um, isn't about this isn't about an individual's uh, prayer. This I'm, is I'm even I'm even talking about the person that let's say we. Well, yeah, you did you did mention the state. So you're saying that also in the state, why why can't you're having a, a little bit of trouble seeing why well, that wouldn't be a problem? It's a problem because the state is an authority, and prior to the settling of North America, you know you had a large body of uh, the Anglican Church controlling the state um, of affairs all over Europe. Our for, our uh, ancestors fled that. Protestants, Catholics, and pagan all fled that to this country so that a state would not impose those values on them. Um, and that's that's how why we wrote the First Amendment. We penned it in such a way as to say that uh, you don't get endorsement of a religion, not a state endorsement. It's and it. Can you see the consequence of church-state separation in that light? Well, for one. Good that even the uh, founding of our country, there were prayers that were invoked and mm -hmm. done during Congress, mm -hmm. during the meetings of the um, right, right. Like that. So what that that now that's wrong, but back then it was okay. I, have a, I actually know about the very first prayer, which was at the Continental Congress, and I can't remember who stood up and said it, but one of our founding fathers who didn't really affiliate with, didn't affiliate with the Christian religion at all, didn't care for it. Uh, at the motion to have a, the prayer, which did occur, as you said, he said, I'm no bigot, and I'll hear this prayer. And what you've got to remember is that that was, there's no evidence to say exactly what, who said what, but we do have um, transcripts of that meeting. And you can figure a unanimous decision there. No one objected. In fact, the only objection that arose out of one of the most unchristian person, persons in attendance was, I'm no bigot and I'll hear the prayer. But this, you're talking about a small group of people, of government officials, and if there were, technically I would still have problems with that. But we are talking about the University of Tennessee, we're talking about large government bodies which influence a great number of people, and you've got to recognize everyone, and so you don't exclude any of them. You include everyone. But your question is that you're wanting to know why the change, right? Well, not just the change, but I still don't understand if it's an individual and it's the individual's belief system. Uh -huh. Because I would be wrong for him to do that. And if he is in the state the way, because it's the founding father, did that they were Okay, okay. The thing, all right. Did you get it? Okay, so the thing is this, though. You're talking about the individual. Uh, if, if, but if you are an individual and you are a teacher, and you feel like you should lead your students in prayer, do you think like a Muslim should be, or a Jew or a Hindu should be allowed to do that with their class? With your kids? 
or anyone's well, kids. Anyone's kids in no, that class. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, uh, I think you got it. Again, I, 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 just I anyone's kids in the classroom. Yeah. You're, so you're, you're ready to any point of set to, I mean, to suppress from the future right, to express right one or more. Where do you draw? Where do you, where do you draw the line? You draw the line when you trample the students' rights, which is the right not to be influenced by an authority of the state government. So, but you're imposing a secular belief system onto the student by oh no, it's not imposing a. It's not imposing a belief system to say that people, like even atheists, can't stand up there and say there's no God. Yeah, you, you understand? A I cannot can't do that. Yeah. yeah, no teacher can do that. We're not imposing anything on them by saying that no one can impose on them. But We're in saying, a way, here, huh? Even the state system, only one view is fine, is understood, not multiple views of science understood. I think there should be a free understanding of ideas in the sense where. All ideas can be put on the table so they okay. can be evaluated. We agree with so that. Like, sure. sure. But, yeah. but I don't see what that has to do with prayer at a football game or at our, you know, in our government. Local because it's not visual that Brett can put on drive. Because, because it's what? Could you say it again? You're breaking up a little bit. Whether it be a teacher, whether it be whatever. You're breaking up, Paul. I couldn't hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it, it comes down to the individual right of the person that's praying. Oh, the thing is that you, when you, but the thing is there is a limit to, to what an individual can do when they are working for the state. When you are working in an official position, you are representing everyone. Your personal beliefs be damned. You have to be, if you're in a position where you're representing someone. It's like right. if you're a lawyer and you're representing a client you know is guilty, it is still your job to present them in the best light possible to get you know, to, to to make sure that they're not just being completely demonized. Right. It is your position to protect everyone and to represent everyone of all belief systems and you in that official capacity saying your own positions or praying your own beliefs or whatever you're no longer representing everyone uh, you your your official capacity requires right. you to represent. Now we're not we're not talking about what they do uh, to themselves but mm. when they're representing in that official capacity then you're, you're yeah, trampling they're, on they're, church and state. Yeah. You're influencing and you are endorsing uh, one over the others. And in this case, the one we brought up with school. I still, don't, I still don't understand that you're imposing a secular view mm -hmm. onto a religious person. What am I imposing on yeah. someone? That's what I'm they trying they to figure out. No, what, no, no, no one said that. <laughs> no one's no, saying no, that you can't you know, do it. He's, you, so you're saying that because I'm saying to... Uh, because I'm saying to a state representative that when he represents me among all of these other people, that uh, I don't appreciate that he invokes his religion in his business. You're saying that I am imposing my position on him. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, could you? Could, I mean, but I, I wouldn't hire I wouldn't hire somebody to, to represent me that didn't have the same belief as I did, or at least. Would try to represent my values in a, in a good in a good way. Right. Okay. So okay. But there's there's <laughs> there's a line to be drawn because we have we have the uh, you know there are laws on the books for example that say atheists can't hold office still. There's those still exist. Those are what I you know that's the kind of thing I'm talking about is when you allow people to be playing with their religious beliefs in our in state matters and affairs, you start excluding members of your populace for bad reasons. Right. I mean, you may not personally vote for an atheist, and that's your right. But to simply exclude us outright and say that even if people did vote for an atheist, he still wouldn't be allowed to hold office, that's a problem. Well, no. I mean, what a, I think my belief system, you may have, if you believe very similar in what I need mm -hmm. as, in that representative in that position, I would vote you even as an atheist. Okay. Because I mean, nobody's going to believe 100% everything. Right. Does. But that's secularism. You that realize. is secular. Secularism presented, is where it, yeah. no, it doesn't matter what your religion is or your perspective on religion or lack thereof, you will still work together to get things done. That's secularism. Right. So when it comes to a UT football game and people are bringing their families to this and getting together with friends, and they come here to the or go to the stadium to see that game, and suddenly there's a prayer to Jesus being offered by the official representatives and not people in the stands. Right. Now people in the stands are saying it as well, but that's their business because the people in the stands they're yeah you know, they're like shoppers you might say. 
but when the when the official state funded group uh, is is pr is showing preference for one group over the rest, that is wrong. Right. You've excluded uh, a body. We, of the we had we had someone earlier make an excellent point. I believe it was Faithless Forest who made an excellent point that of how would it feel if ath if an atheist was delivering the prayer moment and instead was saying that you know led everyone in an affirmation that there are no gods jesus is jesus wasn't the son of god not the christ uh the bible is a bunch of nonsense with ta taxpayer money endorsing right. you know paying you for know the that's not something that that's i think belongs doesn't belong in that there. kind of setting for one thing and for another thing it's it, it, it well, kind of for the same reason it's it's because it should be a, a, a shared space that's secular in much the same way, are not you know we can go to different go to school and not have to worry about teachers teaching our children things we don't approve with regard to religion. But what if about I don't agree with certain things that the teacher may be teaching my children? Mm -hmm. Where do I have the line? To, where do you draw the line? Because of, right, like I said, like earlier, you have the you do have uh, the intelligence line aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Evolution and college design uh -huh. in the school system only right. one aspect is being portrayed. I understand. Uh, and the thing is that you can challenge that. You have the power to challenge that. Much the same way the people are challenging this prayer situation. You have the right to go to court over this. It's been done before. I advise you to look up the Dover trial. That was an excellent example. Uh, Dover versus state of Pennsylvania. Right. That was an, that's trial. an excellent case. Look into that. Um, because that was where intelligent design had its first and I think most, I, I'd argue last, chance at really winning, uh, rep, uh, being taught in schools as legitimate science as a result of how badly they did. Uh, but I would advise looking that up. Uh, the And so you can, not, you can challenge that yourself. You can go to your school board. You can go to your local representatives, state representatives, write to them. You can get people together and form groups to advocate for this. You can... Uh, do a lawsuit if you feel that's beneficial. Um, you can homeschool your children. I was personally homeschooled five years, uh, not for what the teacher was teaching, but for other reasons. Let me let me butt in real quick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, are you still with us, there, Paul? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. I think what when you're talking about how do you decide what goes on at a school to be taught? You know, we have science classes in schools, and they're not taught. Um, for any other reason than they benefit us, really. It's it's knowledge that we've learned, and so you you can't have just a science class anymore. There's biology, chemistry, physics, mm. and you've got math as a set of principles to apply to those. Um, you've got an English class, that's not science. You've got a, you can have a religious class as long as it doesn't, I mean, if you can prove that it's science, if you can, or I'm sorry, if you can exert evidence and show that it's science, and you can have a science class, then you should be able to teach it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, right. what Ben was talking about was, regarding intelligent design, we have shown that that is not science. Um, if someone I, I else- I disagree, but that's okay. Well, right, right. We, you and I would disagree well, on that. Well, I was well, saying that you can look up the trial right. where they, they got together, they gathered together the top minds on both sides and had them debated out right. in front of a Republican Bush-appointed judge who did not believe, in, believe evolution prior to the case who ruled against intelligent design, saying that it was some of the most uh, despicable uh, acts of uh, dishonesty uh, in his that he's seen in right. his court of and law. And that was more on the action. And this includes Michael, involved, uh, Michael Behe, for example, who was the star uh, witness for the intelligent design side. Uh, he, was one of the, he was shown to be one of the worst uh, mistakes that the intelligent design could have made, even though he is technically the father of intelligent design today. Well, I, either way, you can you can but you have can look at that and decide for yourself that that you disagree. But mm -hmm. it is slightly different than what we're talking about in the sense that that can be a, appealed to our educational system as to whether or not it benefits and whether or not you want it mm -hmm. taught in schools. The issue that you take with church-state separation, which is going to unite the two, is do we have the state representing one religion, mm -hmm. endorsing it as right. an actual as a code of morality, right. as as really anything? over another religion. In this country, basically, I choose for myself what religion I am or what religion or if I don't want to be a part of a religion. And so I must allow others to do the same and that establishes religious freedom. So if my hang on, I I've, I've almost got it. But if my <laughs> sorry. 
if my uh, championing of my First Amendment rights goes so far as to inhibit yours, there is an interesting little battle there. There's a bit of a paradox, and I do kind of see the the hang up. So you're sorry to say. We yeah, got, go by the way, just so you know, we have like less than four minutes of the show time left. We do yeah. have to do a closing then out. Why not, go ahead, Paul. Then why not pass the law? The pastor said it's okay. You express your faith. Do your prayer. And all the person will have to say, I know all of you we represent the way I represent it, but this is my faith, and I'd like to express it this way. Okay. And then pray. Well, Paul, that law already exists, and it's called the First Amendment, and it protects that right in every way. What it so why can't you do that in a public setting like a football game? Well, hang on. Uh -huh. Well, if it's a community football game and it's not endorsed by the state, then that's one thing. As such as I played, I used to play church softball all the time. There were prayers, mm -hmm. and you know what? The First Amendment protected my right to pray to God mm -hmm. and you know the leader of the team. But if it's a state. You now have an authority, a representative of the United States, of law. Mm -hmm. it, and when they say something, mm -hmm. it must be clear that they're not endorsing one religion right. above the other. And even and the thing is, is that you know, if uh, if that's his personal thing, then he needs to keep that out of his official business. Right. Uh, that's the separation. It's like when I go to work at my job, it is my it is incumbent upon me, and I've, I've even gotten in trouble for this because I've had a customer ask me about my religious perspectives and whether or not I've heard, read the Bible uh, and would be interested in Jehovah's Witnesses, and becoming a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I've gotten in trouble because I responded to her by explaining to her why I don't believe that. And the thing is that in my, and I learned, uh, in my capacity in my job, my personal opinions, my free speech is held back because I'm representing a larger entity. Which right. is the business I work for. In the case of the state, you're representing the entire country. Right. You may have personal prayers you'd like to offer, and that's fine to do to yourself in your head, or, or you know, where it's not an official yeah. capacity. You're at home, you can go to church, you can go hang out with friends. Uh, so, you know, that's the thing is that you are an official representative of this country. You cannot be doing that right. sort of thing. Well, a, there's, a, there's a difference between one's personal life and public. We're life. down to about a minute and a half yeah. here, Paul. Um, do you have any? I mean, are you still? Are you still just gonna like we we disagree? But I mean, do you do you understand this side of it a little more? No, I understand. Okay. I understand, but I just think basically, I think we have shifted where it was once a fact, now it's not, and I don't know what happened. Right. I, I understand. I agree I, with the confusion. Yeah. I, I think. I think though. You know, early on, they were still forming the nation, and they were com slowly coming to conclusions about how best to represent the country and such. That's that's actually so. case in point. What was going on, Paul? I mean, from my own study, so we've US got a history, minute. Yeah, we're we've down to a close. minute. Um, but Dover. <laughs> I would suggest looking at the Dover case with regard to intelligent design. If you're if interested. you want to look into that. But we have to let you go, Paul. Thank I'll you for calling. You Thanks for calling, Paul. Take care. All right, it is time to start wrapping things up. Get out, pen, uh, get out your pen and paper. Uh, this has been Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Uh, please send us feedback. Leave us a voicemail at 865-272-9060 or email us at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. You can see the show uh, on Tuesdays from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on this Knoxville station and at 2200 Greenwich, uh, Greenwich Mean Time at ctvnox.org. We would like to send our thanks to Sam, Jonas, Forrest for technical support, to the staff at CTV Knox, and to all of our callers. Uh, um, remember to examine your beliefs. Uh, what is real has nothing to fear from examination. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>